As soon as a man seriously seeks truth and goodness, little by little, instead of seeking himself in everything, instead of tending more or less consciously to make himself a center, man tends to seek God in everything, and to substitute for egoism, love of God and of souls in him. This constitutes the interior life. No sincere man will have any difficulty in recognizing it. The one thing necessary, which Jesus spoke of to Martha and Mary in Luke chapter 10, consists in hearing the word of God and living by it. The interior life thus conceived is something far more profound and more necessary in us than intellectual life or the cultivation of the sciences, than artistic or literary life, than social or political life. Many artists, literary men, and statesmen never rise above this level of purely human activity, which is, in short, quite exterior. Do the depths of their souls live by God? It would seem not. This shows that the interior life, or the life of the soul with God, well deserves to be called the one thing necessary, since by it we tend to our last end and assure our salvation. This last must not be too widely separated from progressive sanctification, for it is the very way of salvation. There are those who seem to think that it is sufficient to be saved and that it is not necessary to be a saint. It is clearly not necessary to be a saint who performs miracles and whose sanctity is officially recognized by the Church. To be saved we must take the way of sanctification, which is identical with that of sanctity. There will be only saints in heaven, whether they enter there immediately after death or after purification in purgatory. No one enters heaven unless he has that sanctity which consists in perfect purity of soul. The interior life of a just man who tends toward God and who already lives by him is indeed the one thing necessary. To be a saint, it suffices that we live profoundly by God. As our Lord says in Matthew chapter 16, For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? If people sacrifice so many things to save the life of the body, which must ultimately die, what should we not sacrifice to save the life of our soul, which is to last forever? Ought not man to love his soul more than his body? Or what exchange shall a man give for his soul? Our Lord adds, also Matthew chapter 16. He tells us in Luke chapter 10, one thing is necessary. To save our soul, one thing alone is necessary. To hear the word of God and to live by it. Therein lies the best part, which will not be taken away from a faithful soul even though it should lose everything else.